Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. The time has finally arrived for the new Samsung flagships, the Galaxy S23, S23 Plus, and S23 Ultra. We've just gotten back from the event, so let's have a look at what's new from Samsung. Just like last year, the Galaxy S23 lineup features three devices, the compact vanilla model, the larger plus, and the largest and most feature-packed S23 Ultra. Design-wise, all three phones are very similar to last year's models. Maybe the most noticeable difference is that the vanilla and the plus model don't have a camera bump anymore. Now each camera sticks out individually, like on the Ultra. That's not all though, the S23 lineup is the first time we've seen the new and sturdier Gorilla Glass Victus 2. The S23 phones are also supposed to be more eco-friendly than ever, using more recycled materials in their construction. All of the S23 models bring the same custom chipset, and we're not talking about Exynos. It's called the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy, and is basically a higher clocked version of the latest and greatest Snapdragon chip. Coupled with Samsung's latest One UI 5.1 interface, which brings under-the-hood optimizations, the user experience should feel smoother than ever before. Plus, the more powerful image processing should mean better camera performance, especially at night. When it comes to the actual cameras, the S23 Ultra is the one with the upgrade this year. It features a new main camera with a whopping 200 megapixel sensor. Photos can come out at 12.5 megapixels, 50 megapixels, or the full 200, and the main camera features improved OIS and enhanced autofocus. It's called Super Quad Pixel Technology, and it's the equivalent of the all pixel autofocus that we used to get before Samsung moved to the 108 megapixel sensors. And now, with added omnidirectional operation, it should be among the best out there. Expert RAW has been integrated into the native camera app and you can capture raw photos at up to 50 megapixel resolution with HDR applied. And now you can record 8K video at 30 FPS instead of 24 FPS, something in which Samsung was behind the times, and there should also be less frame cropping than before. On the back, the rest of the cameras are the same as on the S22 Ultra, a periscope 10x telephoto zoom, a 3x zoom, and an ultra wide. On the front, there is a new 12 megapixel selfie cam, which is shared with the other two models and has autofocus like before. Like last year, the display of the S23 Ultra is a curved 6.8 inch dynamic LTPO AMOLED with a QHD resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate. There is an improvement in the Vision Booster, which adjusts the color tone and contrast of the display based on ambient lighting. It's more adaptive now for three different lighting conditions. The S23 Ultra brings the same 5000 mAh battery capacity as before, but we'll have to see if the battery life is any different thanks to the more efficient chipset. Of course, probably the most unique feature is back, and there are no changes there. It's the stylus which hides within the body of the device. Again, using it feels smooth and responsive. The S22 Ultra had probably the best stylus experience on a phone, and there was no need for an overhaul. Now let's talk a bit more about the S23 and S23 Plus. Compared to last year, they're more of an incremental upgrade than the Ultra. We have the design and the chipset changes which I've already mentioned, and one other major difference is the battery capacity, which was slightly increased. Now you get a 3900 mAh battery on the vanilla model, and 4700 mAh on the Plus. It's not much different, but together with the new chipset, we should expect a decent improvement in battery life on both models. Besides that, it's all basically the same as last year, including the 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display on the vanilla model, and the 6.6 .6 inch dynamic AMOLED on the Plus model. Both are flat, with a 1080p resolution and 120Hz refresh rate. The cameras have seen a slight upgrade this year. Again, on both models, you get a 50 megapixel main cam, a 3x telephoto, and an ultra wide. But now the ultra wide has autofocus, so you can take macro close ups with it. Like I mentioned, we'll have to see if the improved processing from the new chipset makes a major difference on these devices. So there you have it, guys. Overall, it seems like the S23 Ultra is bringing the excitement with this 200 megapixel main cam, but at least the other two models get the improved chipset and bigger batteries. Let us know what you guys think about the new lineup, and I'll see you on the next one.